this is the year that I. Love Mel this is the year that I love Mel Robbins too, whether whether she asks a question or not. But um, it's 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 an opportunity to uh, to think about one's self and one what you're what you would like to accomplish this year, right? Setting an expectation for yourself. So you know, so many t so many years we um, we you know set a what are they called uh, at the beginning of the year? You have New Year's resolution. <laughs> New Year's resolution, right? And and, and it's uh, it loses power pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. But uh, I love this question, and I want to ask you all for a quick group conversation. What is your answer to this? This is the year that I make a million dollars. Make a million dollars, bam! Go, I'm in. I'm, I'm up for all of that. Very shy. Oh. Who else? Just throw it out there. You surfing? It could be uh, an adult. No, not. But uh, what do you guys got? No language. Learn a new language. What language you learn? French. French. Okay. You learn it. You know any other languages? Uh, a little Spanish. Most Spanish. Going France. All right. Good. It's uh, not the most useful, but if you're in France, it is. <laughs> Very useful in Europe. <laughs> Very useful in Europe. Yeah. And sort of everybody in France wanted to speak English. When I was there, no, I was there. They spit on me because I spoke English. That was the case. I spoke English. That was also a very long time ago. I had the opposite experience. Who else? What else? This is the year that I go to Thailand. Go to Thailand. Oh, okay. Oh, she wants to give me some tips and tricks. Who? My daughter. Oh, she went at the beginning of the year. Yeah, excellent. Nice. All right. What else? Had that Thailand trip planned, and uh, COVID got COVID, COVID got in the way. Yeah, yeah. So it was right there. Was oh, we were yeah. We had to get all everything refunded. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is the year that I'm oh. kinder to myself. Oh. Treat yourself, girl. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> that's a good one. Anybody else? Come on, everybody should have an answer to this question. Yeah. Whether you want to share it or not, that's a different yeah. story, right? Come on, Josephine. What do you have? Yeah, You're capping. All right. Okay. Um, anybody else? No? No? Anybody? No? Okay. All right. Think about it. Chuck? Chuck? You seem like you have an answer. Uh, I always do, but you know, not everything is <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Chuck. All right, uh, let's see. We got. We're, oh, so this is what we're going to do today, right? Mm. We're going to go through a quick uh, little office meeting, and then we're going to bring up the people who went to family reunion, and uh, we're going to have a, a share panel. Kevin Tang, welcome. Kevin's not here today. Let's we'll see Kevin, but uh, welcome Kevin when you see him. Ah, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, right after this at twelve thirty, Richard Schulman. Does everybody know who Richard Schulman is? Okay, Richard Schulman is a highly producing uh, uh, um, agent and team who uh, grew, uh, you know, I, I think he started at Keller Williams West Side, right? Is that correct? Yeah. And uh, Richard does volume business and um, that can sometimes be over 200 transactions, right? It's a lot, it's a lot. And uh, he has a team. And the thing that I like uh, what Richard does is, you know, Richard, is everything you see in Richard is right there on the surface, right? Uh, and um, and he gets in there and he does, he models for his team. He does the lead generation that he's asking his team to do at the same time with them and he problem solves and, uh, and he is very uh, consistent in, in those activities. So he's gonna share lead generation uh, tips and tricks. Critical success factors for lead generation today. So I'll be interested to know that how that, how he's adapted, uh, how he's adapted his activities to, uh, to this particular market, right? Also, all right, so that is here in person at 12.30. So we're, I think we're gonna to try to do it in the big room. <laughs> the award ceremony. Uh, Thursday, March 14th, as, as much as we tried, uh, we could not find a space that uh, could work for us. So we're gonna do it uh, uh, unless something comes up in the meantime. It is March 14th. 
uh, Thursday, 11 a.m. We're gonna do it in the office. We'll have, we'll, we'll, we'll spend a little extra attention on food and getting the space in a, uh, in a uh, party-like atmosphere. Oh, that's a good question. 11 a.m. Right, it's a, it's a lunchtime event. Uh, also, in a uh, in a healthy uh, 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 networking event or or uh, a office networking event uh, in the in the uh, month of March, we're going to be doing a hike. Uh, probably, with, I think an, like an easier, manageable one is like tree people or something like that, which is up on Mulholland Drive. We'll do it on Saturday in the morning. Morning. I think nine o'clock is a reasonable time. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Okay. Good <laughs> done. Okay. No, no, no. I'm all wow. set. That. Agent <laughs> happenings, <laughs> birthdays. Lydia, Austin Kramer, and Michelle Maslow all have birthdays this week. Charlotte is absolutely correct. We have some closings. Paul Yu, Steve Senegram, and Champ. Linda Blair, close too. Uh, Wolfgang and um, Arden. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, Ardmore. New escrow, Charlotte Blake on Lennox, Tiffany Chin on, Tiffany Chin on Summertime Lane, uh, Christina on Madison and Byron on Rose. Excellent. Congratulations, you guys. Sylvia, New listings. Sylvia just went into escrow. Who did? Sylvia. Sylvia? Well, uh, we will, uh, we, you're going to have to go more than that if you, you know. Congratulations, Sylvia. Yay. There you go. <laughs> Next week. Um, here you go. Charlotte, you want to talk about 26th Street? Uh, this is a super sweet Spanish. Um, it's on the corner of 26th and Idaho. So it's really close to Brentwood Country Market, as well as the shops on Montana and the beach, like five minutes, all of them. Um, uh, walkable to Franklin Elementary. It has a lot of um, original details. It's really, really pretty house. Bathrooms and kitchens need work. Um, my seller bought it about a year ago was going to do the work to it but it was having a very hard time doing that from the east coast so she's decided to let somebody else take over the project um but it's a really sweet house the first open, question they're going to ask is open saturday um, and Sunday. Well, uh, it's not the first question i would ask but <laughs> but, but i would ask how much did she buy it for uh they look that up <laughs> charlotte <laughs> that's what she wants that's not what's that What's that? That's what she wants. Yeah, I, I understand that. It's just so. Antron has a yeah, has a listing on Broadway, one bedroom, one bath, nine hundred and forty square feet for five hundred and seventy-five thousand. That's actually that's kind of kind of cute. Great light. Uh, also, Tiffany Chin on Rossmore, five thirty-one North Rossmore, two bedroom, two bath, uh, fifteen hundred and ninety-seven square feet, which is Huge. I remember when her client bought this, I think, 80. Also leases. Christina, Grand Ave. Oh, it's at the 1050, 16th floor, South View. Super nice uh, balcony. Um, it's got two parking as well, so 4,500. South Park, downtown LA. Excellent. Uh, also, this one is in, um, okay, it's RVA. not Mount Watt, it's RVA. It's like right on the, right by the LA river. Oh. It's like a new little uh, new construction Good pocket there. Um, this one is a townhome, three level bedroom downstairs, main floor, two more bedrooms upstairs as well. Um, and it's got attached two car garage. So it's like a mini little house, but mm -hmm. it's one shared wall. Um, is it right on the river? It's like, it's yeah, like, Dragon where, had a couple yeah, of it's, it's right like, there. it's like where that LA river is. So mm -hmm. it's this community and the Chasher community is brand new. Mm -hmm. So it's minutes from like Frogtown and Silver Lake, super, super close Excellent. right there. So, um, yeah. And, uh, it's ready turnkey to go. So we just, went live with it. I have, I'm going to do my first showings starting this weekend. Excellent. So it's a three, a three levels? Yeah, tri-level townhouse. Uh, a deck on the top? No, it doesn't. Uh, Vinnie Park has a, um, has a, a new lease listing on Oakwood. Uh, Esteban, do you want to talk about that or do you uh, know about this one? Uh, we're currently leasing that one as a speaker. 
Uh, you have some. You have uh, offers on it already. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I don't know. Uh, obviously, we'll some show us for that place right now. Okay. Uh, four so bedroom, four bath on Oakwood. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, it's a little tricky because the owners right now are doing uh, most of all uh, Airbnb until they can sit out. Oh, got so it. We have to get uh, requests in advance for us to show the so You have to slip them uh, in between the. That takes about a month or so. Like, no, two weeks or one week to uh, vacate the property because it's going to be furnished. Gotcha. All right. Excellent. All right. Uh huh. Then, we, then also, you want to talk about Harvard? Uh, not yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I haven't actually been able to go there that often. Gotcha. So I don't really know about it. All right, excellent. But it's it's huge. It's it's wonderful. It's just, uh, well, is that a whole floor? You think it's a multi-family? So it's a tri level. Right? Yeah, but it's tri level. Uh, there's like five down yeah. apartment per floor. Am I? Uh, no, no, no. So it's a tri level. Two, two there's two houses. buildings for sure. Um, just, yeah, I haven't gone there often enough to know much about. So it's like a duplex, right? Yeah. Tri level. Yeah. So. Oh, side by sides. That's what I was asking. Yeah. Boom. Got it. What you got there, baby? Yeah. I know for rent, we're, we're, we're about three to be a very tiny studio in the back. An additional. An additional ADU. It's very super small. Got it. All right. Is that really five bedrooms, five baths, or is that the whole building? Is that uh, that's different? just one unit. Yeah. <laughs> Each unit has Two thousand square feet. Champ and Steve have a, a lease listing on uh, Arden, right there. Uh, one fifty one North Arden, uh, four bedroom, four bath, twenty four hundred and eighteen square feet for ten thousand nine hundred. Uh, Tiffany Chin uh, has a. Uh, two bedroom, two bath on Wary, uh, but not her old place. It's a, it's in that same building, which is a great building. Yeah, forty six hundred or thirteen hundred and twenty has a mezzanine and a bedroom upstairs and a and a bedroom downstairs. Two baths. It's it's they're nice. Uh, they're nice units. This dragon. How are you today? Income properties. Day Park has two units uh, on Portland. It is uh, 6,235 square foot lot, and it's 1.5 uh, uh, for the uh, for the duplex. Uh, also, Vinny has a four unit. It's three bedroom, two bath, four three bedroom, two baths. All of these are like really large uh, large units. That's amazing. On Kenmore, 1.799. Any. Uh, Condition to help. What's the condition like, Esteban? Have you I seen this one? I've only been there once to deliver the open houses. Yeah, uh, it's a little run down. Yeah. It's a little run down. Yeah. Need some, need some upgrades. Are right. they, uh, are they uh, tenant occupied or? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. When he was there, uh, and then the first he was talking to the tenants. He only speaks Spanish, so. Gotcha. So it'll be delivered with tenants. I don't know. Yeah, it's a new thing. We'll work on us. So let's get uh, you know. Uh, meeting, by the way. What's that? Uh, just, you guys have to come the Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. No, no, no. They can get to them. We just, we just like to you know talk about it if we can, right? So uh, we'll yeah. find out from Penny what the rent rolls are and what uh, what the upside on this property is. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pocket listings. Yeah. So I have a um, house. It's in it's in a Culver Crest in Culver City. It's where all the hills are. Gorgeous Craftsman. Um, it's about four thousand square foot of house. It's sitting on a massive lot, and they've got like a tree house built with a bridge. I mean, it's just a putting green. Tree house has a bridge. Yeah, it's like there's a bridge wow. to it and it goes into the tree house. It's pretty cool. Bridge. I, I stepped oh, on it. Bridge. Bridge. <laughs> bridge. I want a tree house with a fridge. Bridge. Uh it's got like putting green. It's I mean, it's so adorable. And um, we're going to go live with that, but it is a lease. Um, and we're looking at about twelve thousand dollars on that one. And then we've got another one on uh, Overland 11260 Overland Avenue, and that's a townhome, four bedrooms, four bedroom, four bath. Um, and that one is going to go live actually probably in a couple weeks. 
and that is like right by downtown Culver. So if someone's looking for something like that, and uh, it's situated in the back corner, so it's, it's got, you know, it's in the best area of that community. And we'll be going live on that, I believe at about 6,500 for that one. Okay. Excellent. All right. So we have uh, two problems we want to talk about. One is 1901 South Holt is coming out live on Friday. It is a development deal extraordinaire. It's 8,400 square foot lot, LARP2 zoning. Uh, and there's an abandoned alleyway behind it, uh, several, several uh, not 100 square feet, but maybe if another 100 square feet uh, could be reclaimed. That potential from the city it should be a bill of four to six units, depending on how the developer wants to do it. Uh, and it should be uh, coming out at 1695. It'll probably sell uh, upwards of that. I believe it's going to be a super hot property. What's, what's the address again? 1901 South Holt. 1901? 1901 South Holt will come on this weekend. Uh, there'll be open houses and uh, happy to get you all in early. What, what part of town is that in? That's Pico Robertson. So it's just it's south of just south of 18th Street, uh, and west of Las Canicas. It's an R two, and and LARP two. So why would you say that this is a development play? What's existing here? Of a tear down single family home down there, and it's 8,400 square feet <laughs> plus, Lot. You know, plus Lot. more. So you should be able to do four to six units there. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, the, the home is cute, but it's going to be torn down. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's no. It's a corner lot. It's a corner lot. You got an alley. With an alley, too. Yeah. Oh. oh. You can really say that. So, the other uh, thing we just wanted to mention we have a high rise at uh, Mirabella in the Wilshire Corridor that we just reduced $100,000 to 1595 So, if we have any clients looking for the best deal at the Mirabella, this is it. Just out of curiosity, I used to own something in that building. What's the what's the square footage on it? 2803. Wow. Three almost 3,000 square feet. Yeah. Two, two oh. bedroom, two and a half What is the uh, what's the HOA? HOA? One of the double masters? No. What's the HOA? The HOA is 34. 34. Wow, and that includes but, but full service, full service, twenty-four hours, ballet, a car, uh, and your uh, gym, yeah, yeah. pool, yeah, it's, uh, great views, lovely. Front two balconies, three balconies, three balconies. Does it have direct access elevator? No, no, but it's right off the lobby on the second floor. Excellent, 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 excellent. Anyone else? Pocket listings coming soon. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Oh, I may have. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I may have a two bed, two bath penthouse uh, in West Hollywood. Um, there's a bunch of legal stuff that needs to happen. Lease or purchase? Or purchase. Sell? Purchase. Need some work. Um, kitchens and baths are good, but flooring not so good. Um, double height ceilings. Um, Upside in the uh, renovation, though. Yeah, I mean, it depends what it sells for, but I think it's probably about, probably go out around 900, 930 on it. Oh, okay. It's a good start. How many great, great location. Um, 1600? 1600. Just went up. It was 700 now. It's, nice. it's prime West Hollywood, though. There, there's a pool, there's a gym. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Anyone else before I uh, move forward? Okay, here we go. Gate Park has a, um, this is a pocket listing on uh, 2121 Portland. Uh, it is uh, two units also, eight beds, four baths, 30, 3,018 square feet in, 62 under. Um, but how do we, uh, how do I, how do I get? Well, I just want to price under. Yeah. I think the price is underneath. The... Yeah, I want to know what that is. Nope. Uh -huh. mm. One point five. One point five. One point five. Thank you. Thanks, Alyssa. One point five is the asking price. All right. Also, today we have. Uh, a photographer sponsor. Hi, Shlomi. Shlomi. Um, 
uh, has done some work for Charlotte and I think Tiffany also, right? Yeah. Is that yeah, Charlotte was gonna have you shot Tiff? You've just, you're just friends with Tiff. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Come up, come on up. Do you yeah. I'll give you the I'll, I'll even give you the you can give you the little uh, blonker. You want to talk about yourself, your services a little bit? Um sure. I'll introduce her. You're wearing my jacket. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> So Shlomit has been friends for a long time. She's a fabulous photographer, does headshots, and she's been bugging me to update mine. And I realized when you guys put up the congrats on the brokers thing that my headshot was older than Haya. Um, so I thought maybe that was the time to do it. And she brings, um, she has a really lovely studio and a really cute dog and she brings in hair and makeup so you really all you have to do is bring a couple of wardrobe changes you show up and she does everything else makes you super super comfortable and for those of you who have seen my new current headshots that actually look like me and are not 23 years old um uh it's all because of her because as most of you know i'm really bad on camera yeah oh. trying to get it there we go okay so, hi everyone. My name is Shlomit. The best way to remember that is Shalom, let's eat. Shlomit. <laughs> and I brought bagels. So, really, you guys, have, but I didn't just bring bagels today. I have something to something else to, to give you guys. Um, as you heard, I don't do just your standard kind of office headshots. It's really a full service experience. I take care of you so you feel comfortable. I work with the People, I love working with people who think they are not photogenic, who hate being photographed, who think they can't get a good picture. Um, and so if you haven't had your, your headshot updated or you have a headshot that you don't love, I would love to work with you. Um, I'm actually gonna give away um, $2,000 credit today to somebody, which will cover an entire session. Okay. Cover an entire session and 10 images. Yep, to one lucky winner. Um, so if you want to drop your business cards in here, and, the, and I also have little, um, I'll, we can pass this around. You can just drop your card in here. And you could also take out, don't take out your colleagues' business cards to increase your chances, yeah. just, you know. But you can take out one of these, which is one of my cards in it, um, if you want my information here. So to enter, what you need to do is just follow my, Follow my Instagram, which has a QR code on here, um, and drop your business card in here, and I'm going to draw a winner for today. Are you announcing it? On, oh, today, not on your Instagram. Um, I will announce it on my Instagram, yes. So, um, actually, can you do a little like, picture for me so I have a reference like of what we're talking about here? And great. also, I don't, I don't want you guys to get scared of when she says $2,000. I know you're used to like $75 headshot day where it's just a mill of people running through. Shlomi, that's not what Shlomi does. Right. She really Shlomi gives does. you amazing photos that, I mean, you could use them on a billboard. So it, it's not the standard fare that you might be used to in the office. And um, her yeah. pricing is not all that high either. And I just want to say, you know, really beautiful headshots do set you apart. I know this is not the, the greatest market right now. And having really beautiful professional headshots that you can use in a lot of different places on your social media, on your website, on mailers, on promos, on all of that stuff is really uh, a great way to differentiate yourself. Um, I do both studio work and um, location-based work. So my studio work um, can be either a custom session or a mini session, which I offer a few times a year. I think the next mini session, I actually have three spots left for that on March 24th, if you're interested. Um, that is $600 for mini and it includes two images. Um, and I do photograph men. Oh, here, I'll start passing this around. I do photograph men. Um, and uh, although I really specialize in, in women because we're hardest on ourselves, I think. So, um, but I also photograph men and, and enjoy doing that too. So location and studio work and, and that's what like, I do. Would you do like a team shot as well? Yeah, we can do team shots. Sometimes what I recommend for teams is actually to composite those because teams, oh, teams like your smaller teams, not like a whole office. No, no, my team Yes, shot. absolutely. Yeah. 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 
And the um, other thing that Shlomi does that she does really beautifully that she's not talking about, but might be a really nice closing gift for say a buyer in their a family. She does family photography. I do. Um, that is really sweet. So check out her Instagram. Nice. I do. Excellent. So any other what questions or anything of her? Just to me so that yeah. I can, and like <laughs> maybe from over there, maybe. From yeah. over there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For, it'll be probably another half hour. So okay. It's, it's, it's fine. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you. She's saying you're going to look that way. She's taking your picture. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and if we could like change out uh, the uh, the ALC for people who uh, went to Family Reunion, that'd be really great. So we can better share. Come on, Russ. Come on up. Like Chuck and John and uh, Josephine. Don't hang back here, Josephine. Get in there. Let's go. Unless you have a goal. Yeah, no, your perspective is important. Come on, Russ. You want to go? Good. Thank you. We have Samantha, you know, after you're done there. So, um, you know, family reunion, I, I, I came home absolutely exhausted, right? Uh, just spent from talking and, uh, and learning, talking and listening, talking, oh, and walking, right? Walking. Oh, I was like 16,000 steps a day. Yeah. Right, yeah. it was uh, it was a lot. So yeah, come and all in the same place too. So the same place. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> you look great. But it, well, I, I should be walking more often, apparently, right? Uh, so uh, so let's start with um, you know there are two big events: uh, state of the company and state of the market. And uh, lucky for us, right? right? Um, let's start with state of the market because. Uh, because in that, uh, we had just had the, the car economist the week before, and a lot of the national information was the same or seemed like the same. But I guess my first question to you guys is, um, any, uh, what, what were your ahas in that state of the market conversation? Um, so I'll, I'll start on that for a second. So I will, we got the actual slides last night from our coach, which I'll forward to you, which they you guys can- on you, you connect also. Okay. Uh, you have the slides- If people the can find them the easily, market, great. The state of the market, you Perfect. can watch on them. Yeah, because yeah, they're, they're really helpful and, and it begins to put everything in context and there was a fire hose of information. There are 85 slides. Um, so I would say look through those and then speak with any of us that actually heard the information firsthand and we can discuss them a little further. Um, the, the news is kind of what we already knew. I mean, there was no big news other than rates are probably going to move later in the year than we would like for them to move. Um, and the reason, of course, that we're feeling what we're feeling and the, the slide that really put it all into perspective is, you know, in 1999, there were 700,000 agents. And in 2023, there were a million five agents uh, in, in AR. So when you look at that over, you know, spread over time and, and over the amount of deals that are out there, it's why we're feeling a contraction of sides per agent, right? So that that was probably, you know, the, the, the takeaway is, yeah, of course, that's why we're feeling what we're feeling. Um, the market is not as bad as purported and, and, and reported in the news. Um, affordability is not as bad as it is made out to be when you look at where wages are going and inflation and sort of what's happening. So I think overall it was it was pretty positive, I would say, you know, on the on the takeaway from it. Yeah. About two hundred thousand more um, deals to be had this year over last year. So we'll feel a slight loosening up of that. Consumer confidence is up, which I think is the other big part of it, which is really great. So, and I think uh, the consumer confidence index are the most in, the, the most likely indication of whether our phones are ringing and whether things are coming through to us online with requests for showings and with offers and with with uh, listing appointments. So we're well, beginning to see those. Accepting the the state of the market as yeah. it is. Right? No question. Seven percent is you know you we, the quantum shift to go from. Part of below three to over, you know, to over to eight, right? And the acceleration of it, right? It was, it was, it was how quickly it happened. I think they really like threw everyone. Just yeah. have that seen yeah, yeah, yeah. as um, this is this is what it is. And great slides right. over the historic right. norm, so you yeah. can really have an informed conversation with your client about. 
you know, like over the last 50 years, the norm is 7.74, I believe, percent. So we're kind of right where we should be. Um, it's just that, you know, everybody, the people that have low interest rates keep rubbing that in, right, on the people that are trying to get into the market now. So there's that irritation. Uh, and, you know, and, yeah, and buyers are still whining. So, I mean, that, that, and that's, that's the long and short of it. So overall, it was, it was pretty rosy. And I think 2025 is really going to tell the tale of the turn of the market. It's what it feels like. Real, uh, yeah. Yeah. And the, and the, and the company is teasing that like with banners and with that, like thrive in 25. It's like, well, what the hell about 24? Like, what am I supposed to do? This? Like, I was like 25. Like, what are we doing? So the company is teasing out 25. And, and I, and, and for that reason, I believe that uh, the company really feels that 25 is when the market's really going to turn around for us. So I think uh, it is incumbent upon us now to do planning for the future, right? If you're, you know, if, if you're a newer agent, get your systems in place, get your team in place, get your service providers in place, like in place. get your relationships in place, be prepared for what's coming. Don't wait for the market to pick up to prepare for that. Get ready now because you got about a year before this thing demographically, economically really begins to sort of unleash on us. And there's a big wave coming in. If you're not ready for it, you just get washed away. And so. getting ready isn't just preparing. It's it, getting ready is actionable, right? Getting ready means that you are engaged with your the people you know and who know you, and you are exploring how you can help them on any level. Yeah. Right. That's getting prepared. That will create opportunities in itself, I would argue. But uh, it's not it, preparation is it, is not a devoid of opportunity. Right. And preparations are systems because you're going to have to scale. Absolutely. You're either going to have to scale up really quickly or you're going to get left behind. Yep. And that that's we've seen this before where all of a sudden, you know, the floodgates open and there's just this torrent of business to be yep. had. And either you're ready for it or you're not. And that's what I feel like yep. you know, we're, we're, we're seeing that that's what's coming yep. down the road. Yep. Yeah. I agree. And I think to that thought. But also what came up repeatedly in the bigger, you know, whether it was Gary or, or Tony Robbins or whoever, was in the slow times, in the bad times, that's when your business is built. That's when your, your relationships are solidified so that you are prepared for the future. And the people that are not staying in it during those slow times and they go away that's where the unfair share comes into play i mean there was a lot of that everywhere get your unfair share i mean every every time i turned around i saw a sign about that because now is the time to be doing that yeah. and that's when it's harder is because we have no energy right when when yes. the market's quiet and nothing's going we're like ah, i'm gonna get up today or don't lie here in bed right i mean that's Four, three, two, one move. that's it yeah. right so there was <laughs> well which is which was really which i love that the company did for us this year like both of the both of the big speakers, Tony Robbins and Mel Robbins, no relations, but fascinating, uh, were both geared toward that. Right, it was yep. about taking action. And Tony Robbins, getting yourself into a state mentally, physically, and otherwise to actually do that, and then uh, you know, in, in a bigger picture, longer term way. And then the Mel Robbins thing, which is uh, her book is called the Five Five Second Rule, Five Second Rule, uh, which is a great read. So if you didn't get to hear the talk, at least read the book. Um, and she has this little, you know, process that she goes through where she counts down from five, four, three, two, one, and then she just takes action. Whatever it is that she's procrastinating about, she counts down and she actually does it. And so that's the short-term fix to picking up the phone. That's the short-term fix to walking up to the door. That's the short-term fix with having that tough conversation. Like all of those things that we procrastinate about, great way forward. Five, four, three, two, one, call. Call. Five, four, three, Any two, of it. one, knock. I will say I've used it since I've gotten home and I've made some calls I didn't want to make. I, thought it too. I didn't and want to do it. I did really, it. What really made sense to me in that, you know, you know, scientifically, I guess, is the way she proposed it, is once you start the countdown, you've already resigned yourself to do You made the activity. decision. You made, you the, made decision. the decision. That's well, it. You're in. That's it. Well, it's also about then it's just action. It's yeah. also about if you spend too much time thinking about the action you're talking yourself out of it yeah so the five four three two one just it. makes you do it and i'm a master procrastinator so it, it was brilliant for me um and you're good at it. <laughs> I'm very, yes it, it is a skill um, <laughs> but uh and you know i think they both if you if are those 
features going to be available? I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. I think you could probably break them down into maybe some smaller pieces and maybe because they had very different energy. And I mean, the people that I talk to, sort of, you know, Tony Robbins may speak to one type of person, and Mel Robbins may speak to another, but the messages were very similar. Yeah. Um, and to just move forward with the things that you don't want to do, and that might be something very, very minimal. And when they, when she started talking about it, I was sitting next to Russ and I said, that's really interesting because to me, it's a right brain, left brain switch thing. And I used to do this with my son when he was little and ha hold, having a temper tantrum about something ridiculous. I'd be like, oh my God, I forgot how to count. Can you help me count to 15? And just that switch of, of the brain, disruption, it, it changes mm -hmm. what he was upset about. And she sort of fell upon it on her own and then found a neurological reason um, as to why it worked. Um, so it's definitely, it's a super easy thing just to keep in the back of your mind and just do it. It doesn't, it's like, what was the Nike thing? Just do just it. Just do it. And it doesn't say just do it later. She said, I think she pointed out that, you know, the most important word in there is just, right? right? It's just, it just, just do it. Just, just do it. You know, if it was just, if, if it was just, do it, uh, yeah. then it would it wouldn't be attached to you it's know only do yeah only do yeah, right. right. Tony also referred to that as the winter that. season. The winter season. Yes. Yeah. He said, yes. Um, yes. Yes. If you do well in winter, you'll do well in every season. Right. Winter makes you stronger. And and metaphorically, this market is winter, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. This market is you know it, the crops are down, the animals are uh, you know. Skinny. Are down, are skinny, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's 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 not the most fruitful time, but it's the time to it, there there is opportunity in those times that prepare you for the spring. And spring, right? And spring may be very short. Spring may be very short this year, but it's going to be no. But but it, we may be directly into summer. Like we may go oh, yeah, winter to summer very quickly. Like thousand. there, that spring, you know, there may not be time to hang out and watch things grow in the spring. Like it's going to be straight into it. So. There are people in this room that had their best year ever last mm -hmm. year. Okay? And in, in that, they're getting their unfair share of that 60% that's there. I don't care about the 40, our market's down 40%, super, great. Now I have that information, I throw that information away because I'm not, there, there's no opportunity in the 40%. There's opportunity in the 60%. Like what is there? Who has it? How do I get it? Right? It's, and that's the question you should all be asking. And speaking to that, so I went to a session on a master. I do a lot of door knocking, in case you all don't know. And this guy in San Diego, uh, Stone, something, Richard Stone, was spectacular. He and his son door knock 16,000 homes a year. 16,000 homes. He goes out for four hours at a time daily that's that's what he does every day and it's and without fail he's 76 years old and he and his son sold 250 million dollars in volume last year mostly from door knocking right so brilliant and of course the issue isn't you know and and, and then what he was talking about as far as what you do at the door it's so pedantic it's so it's so there's nothing there was nothing special about what he I was talking about. There was that's nothing that's even remote. He's yeah. not even a, com this is being recorded. I hope not. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to say it anyhow. Well, there's nothing not even not compelling about this. What's special is there was nothing. There was nothing compelling about this man. There was nothing, <laughs> there was nothing <laughs> compelling about this man. He did it every day without fail and, and is making $250 million in sales a year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's, he's, he's able to do it. What's the yeah. name of that guy on the west side? Ron w Wynn. W what's it called? Ron Wynn. Ron Wynn. Ron Wynn does the Built same thing. So it works in LA too. Yeah. This well, James Shaw. Twenty percent of our business comes from Jordan. James Shaw always says that. He said the market is the market. It doesn't matter what it is. Just go out and get your share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. says that? J James, uh, James Shaw. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. All right. Uh, anything else on the uh, uh, on the market, market. <laughs> All right. So let's go into uh, you know what was your favorite breakout session? Because so Killer Williams, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you have the reunion. You have a couple of big events uh, in a big. I, I think there were over twenty thousand people there. 
Uh, mm -hmm. It's a big room, right? And then and then there's breakout sessions. This year there were so many breakout sessions. 300 and some odd. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about uh, some of the themes in those. Break so what I suggest to people going to family reunion is you can focus on a couple facets, one or two facets, and you take all of the classes that book this year I want to play my team. This year I want to do more commercial. This year I want to uh, I want I want I'm all in on technology. It, whatever it is, you choose those themes and then you build you build your uh, agenda around it. So we have mm -hmm. you know some we have people who uh, or it's their first year in real estate, first couple months. We have people who have been in real estate for longer periods of time, and and so. I want to hear from the, from the first time. Yeah, I want to hear yeah, from the first time. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's. What was what was it like? Yeah, uh, it was great. I'm really glad I, I went and uh, to just get immersed in the language and meet people, make contacts. And um, uh, I think one of my favorite um, <clears throat> breakout sessions was uh, I think Josh Abrams. Was that uh -huh. Jason? Jason Abrams. Yeah, he did um, the MRE playbook. MRE playbook. MRE, yeah. MRE. and uh, he was a great speaker. He was really inspirational. He's, He's the He's a really, uh, great personality. Yeah, he was excellent. <laughs> yeah. um, and that session, I walked into kind of by accident because I couldn't find the one that I wanted. Sure. To <laughs> um, <laughs> it's uh, which happened a few times. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I really thought that was a that was a great session. And what did you learn? What one little nub that you learned in there? Um, stay focused. You know, continue. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, and it's, it really comes down to the new generation, right? Yeah. Doesn't it? Well, I mean, the MREA is, are the models, right, mm -hmm. that um, that we use in, in all of our teaching, right? And the playbook is is a is a, a, a kind of a, a, a more kind of action actionable. Yeah, and document. I and I bought it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, it's good. I actually so did it while in the in the room. Did you get anyone? Okay. Sorry. Did you get anyone? Yeah, yeah. I didn't. You know what? I should have. <laughs> I have some if anybody wants one. Uh, I'm happy to give them to you. Right? They're great. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. And then your real estate agent uh, playbook. So the MREA is the red book, <clears throat> right? And then uh, Jason created a playbook, which is a, a, a bit more actionable. He's still going. He's in the other room. He's still going. <laughs> For those of you online. Into action, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> It's about putting the, it's a step-by-step -step on putting all of these models into. There's sort of action plans based on the model. Yeah. yeah. Joy, are you kidding really them great. now? No. Oh. <laughs> I'll buy one they're from you. Like what are they like 10? They're, I have two, they cost me whatever. I think they're 10 bucks. Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 they're inexpensive in there. Yeah, they're yeah. great. Girl, you should have waited. They're 10 bucks. That's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so thank you, Russ. All right, now let's, uh, how about you guys? What, uh, what do you got, Josephine? I made the mistake of going to an AI class. Which one did you go to? Uh, let's see. The one, uh, the the one in the, on the stage? Yeah. Yeah. Did classes. you go the Monday morning one or the one later in the week? Later in the week. Later yes. in the week. That was hard. Yeah, it was uh, so noisy, it was hard oh, to hear. But yeah. Here's a ton of people. But the main thing I learned was he said, if we don't get in on AI, we are going to be left behind. He said, you might as well be in on it because your clients already are. I don't know if that's true or not, but I met a lot of agents. They've been doing AI for years. So when in, got, in what capacity? Working with his clients, doing everything. This guy pulled out his cell phone, he pulled up the MLS on it, showed me what AI did to uh, get a listing. I think I knew that. And then he showed me, um, pull out something else where AI sent a message to his client. And you can edit it. But it is out of this world. Yeah, we're gonna have there to are like obvious AI experiences mm -hmm. that we have when you're on a website and it says, "Would you like to speak to a representative?" Uh, that representative is an AI response and can answer. Prob I think they assert that it can answer eighty percent of the questions, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you know that's one way. But then, but then there's analytical back. You know, like under things that we interact with all the time that are AI driven that that are not as obvious, right? So your clients, you know, uh, uh, you know your uh, your Netflix account 
right? So it, it, you know, they see what you like, AI sees what you like, they see what choices you make, you watch this one, you watch this one for the first two minutes of the show, and then you watch, you know, uh, you binge this, and, and, it, and it measures, like, what else you would might like, and it pushes those things. That's all AI working in the background to, uh, to uh, observe your activities to get you more engaged with the activities. Josephine, so that was the most impactful. Oh, those those AI workshops were the most impactful thing that John and I went to mm -hmm. at Family Reunion this year. And I mean, it's fascinating. Canva already has an AI component, for instance. So you can put into there the prompt. You can say, create a, a marketing prospectus uh, for, for investors on a five unit building located in Santa Monica that's near uh, UCLA and uh, will, will provide all of the financials and you just kind of go on, you just give it a long paragraph of what you want and it will produce for you the template. They'll just put it all together but in the most beautiful way. It, you have to give it information. You have to give it the information to start with. It gets you 80, 90, 95% of the way there. You then have to go in and, and make sure that it's accurate, stuff like that. But it's it put together the whole presentation for you. Yeah, right? Something cool. that you would have spent a day or two putting together, it puts together for you in five minutes. Yeah, and in fact, that was the name of the, uh, of the actual session was about getting time back, right? And so time is one of the things that is tough for us in this business is time management. And as we get busy, the amount of time that we spend on activities is, is, is really great. Um, and so again, in preparation for the future of major business, um, anything that we can do to get organized and to get more time back in our day is super valuable. Like all you've got is your time and your knowledge and your incomparable good looks. Uh, and so that, you know, that, that's what you're working with, right? That, that's what we got. And so um, the, there were two AI sessions. Uh, the first one was Monday morning at nine o'clock was the first thing out of the gate and I went and I loved it so much and went back to the second one. I would say the second one was more difficult because it was so noisy mm -hmm. with other stages. This one was out in the open and not in an enclosed room as most of the breakout sessions are. Um, but that Monday morning one was quiet and I, I could have gone home after that and been happy. I, I could have, I got my money's worth Monday morning by 1030 and I could have gone home and gotten busy. Um, I have copious notes from that, uh, which I'm happy to share with you guys if, if you want them. Um, but the AI thing just made my head explode. Um, it will, if you know what you're doing and you know how to upload information into the system and what you want is chat GPT-4 or better, that's the paid service, uh, 4.0. Uh, it is 20 bucks a month or I bought a lifetime membership for $79.99. Uh, it's the it one, uh, you can't do that anymore? I don't think so. Oh, I, I, I'm glad I got it a month ago. Uh, and so it's the black and white icon, not the green and white free icon that many of you may have at GPT already on your phone. That's 3.0 or 3.5, 4 and 0 is the pro section, which is where you want to be. It's faster, it's more comprehensive, it's more up to date. The other one is a, only has uh, current information back to about a year and a half ago. But it will, you can upload MLS stats to it. It will give you a micro market. It, you can upload your PL to it. It will tell you your last five years of PLs. You can then load it up into that. It will tell you percentages of where you're spending your money and where you're going in business. It, I, I was like, I have, it's yeah. Cool. It's a, an incredible it's tool. Incredible. It's an incredible tool. And, yeah. and to begin yeah. to use it and to also begin to use it and incorporate it into your conversation with your clients is the important thing because your clients want to know that you're ahead of them in the game. And so some people will never know what it is. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't assess who we're in front of in the moment and use it to your advantage. So your client feels like you're on the cutting edge of technology in your business. And so I believe it's going to be a powerful listing tool before it's all over. Uh, I believe that it's going to change the way well, like, everything looks, but certainly this business over the next five years. I mean, some of us are already using it to do descriptions and, and, and that's all lovely. Um, but that's the tip of the iceberg of what this is actually going to do for us in the Wait, long run. Imagine a time where I can say, oh, I'm going to uh, listen quite a bit. Uh, for John and Chuck, uh, to, to sell John and Chuck's house. Before I go on that, I want to put my listing appointment into ChatGPT or or into an AI program and say, how can I tailor this 
listening presentation to be the most effective with John and Chuck. To the electrical engineer I'm sitting in front of who makes X amount of money, who has owned this house for 20 years, who has three children these stages, who went to this university, who is planning on moving to this place, who is like, the prompt should be a paragraph long. Like yep. the prompt should take you nine minutes to do. The other minute is it pops it right out. Yep. Like it, the prompt is everything, right? So it's the information that we feed it is that's the quality of the information that we get out of it. And so Absolutely. to take time on the front end of it and to begin to talk to it as you talk to a person and begin to treat it saying please and thank you as you would to a person, you can upload your profile into the system so that it speaks in your voice. You can, I, th there are so many ways to, to tailor it to you and your need. And then you simply go in and do a couple of edits and it's you and yours and it's on the page it's and you've spent no time, yeah, right? It's genius, yeah. it is genius. Is this a class you would be willing to do? No, 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 no. I yeah. don't, I, I'm just high on it right now. I don't know enough about it Let's to do that, but I, but, it, but that room should be packed the moment someone comes in that knows what they're talking about. So I know enough to talk about it in an excited way. I don't know enough about it. We haven't done it yet. I mean, we've been doing it, but we haven't done it at that we level. We have used yet. it at a very small level, but we had a meeting about it this week and our virtual assistant is, who is 25, uh, you know, we'll be able to just take it and run with it. And he's already crunching numbers. He's creating presentations. He's doing all sorts of amazing things uh, and getting our info and up and into the system so that it, is it healthy? I, I don't mean to digress too much, but I was just mm -hmm. fascinating because, and I didn't go to this session. I couldn't find anything. I think funny. Um, did, is your virtual assistant, like the, what you're loading into it about you mm -hmm. and your voice, is mm -hmm. it helping your virtual assistant to, to out, output things in your voice? Because that's, that's been a little bit of my well, He's been with us for a while. Hiring. He's been with us for a while anyway, so he gets it. And we're constantly refining that. And that happens on a visual basis as well as on a, on a, on a literary basis. But, um, but yes, you know, it, he just needs to understand all of the things that it will do for us. And then he can manage, you know, that, that side of it because he has the technological you know, ability to make all of those things happen. So it's, it's the beginning of it and, and, it's, and it's exciting. Maybe the MLS could do some type of drill. <laughs> I don't know who in I don't know who locally could speak to that, but oh, we should somebody. Find somebody. Yeah. Cool. Speak to CAR. Or like reach out to CAR. Right. I think CAR has got yeah, yeah. I think they would have a grasp on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. the point of it to the, the bigger picture is use it as a tool to help you versus being afraid of it, thinking yeah. it's gonna take your place. Because I think that's what you're hearing a lot out there. That's that's the why to take part of it. You know, it's like, oh. I would say who's gonna take your place are the agents that are using it. It's not gonna take your place. Right. The agents that are using it are gonna exactly. take your place. That's who's gonna take your place. Agree. Yep. I could not agree yep. more. Yep, 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 All right, excellent. All right, um, more, Samantha. On AI? No. No, but what resonated with you? What you did some of your takeaways? Um, some of the takeaways is... Break us Yeah. Um, so one of them is getting clear on our value. Because a lot of people think that we just find the property and that's it. So it's really important that we embrace that we have a value besides just locating, oh, there it is, I'm done. Like that's not what we do. So they said only in the absence of value does cost come into question. Yes. And I love that quote. Like even for ourselves, like when you get your value, whatever that value proposition is, and it can be, I think it can be multiple values that we have, but um, that well, was yeah, really- This cool. market yeah. is a skill-based market, right? Winter is a great time to develop your skills and to use the skill that you really need to know how to survive in the winter, right? And so this is a skill-based market. Your and and, and put it, keeping and moving forward, it's even when it becomes summer, it's going to be skill-based market. You're going to have to define your value in the transaction. Here. Yeah. Um, and then the other one we've talked about is having a menu of services. They're saying in 
certain markets, certain sellers want to have like more of a menu of options that they're especially in relationship to the commission, in uh, to commission, commission uh, this all this you know commission uh, 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 lawsuit, yeah. right? And and so you know the perception that I can just throw it up there and put a sign on and somebody's going to write some offer on it and you're going to process it is you know and why is that worth twenty five thousand dollars on my million dollar house or fifty thousand dollars? Really, is what it comes down to. Uh, you know, giving you know in your listing presentation having a menu of services that that you offer, right? And uh, and maybe in the future having that having a, some kind of sliding scale of value. Hey, I'll uh, yeah, you want to you know, give me one percent? I'll uh, I'll throw it on the MLS and I'll uh, and I'll push any uh, any potential buyers your way, right? Or uh, you know, yeah, don't do that. that. No one does. Well, there are people that do that. that. Just, I think you just have, if you're going to do that, you just have to be aware of your brand and how but that was, is going to reflect on your brand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just and if I may, I, and Samantha, you probably remember this, and, and you might as well. Uh, Keller Williams, uh, uh, the, the mothership, is going to be doing these four-hour workshops yeah. through Zoom on how, uh, for buyers' agents agents in particular on how to define your value right. and I, if you could but it came really out, send they're, they're, it, it comes out of the lawsuits it, but it's, but it's, the yeah. point is is that they're going to be i think they're going to be excellent excellent um training because we, we really have to yeah. upscale our uh, and, and, and power up our our talking points around that and uh, i'm i'm certainly I guess it on yeah. So yeah. dovetail on that value squared. How yeah. to articulate your value yes. to your clients? You Thank can you. find it on the probably KW Connection, one of those one of those sites, and they're going to be doing quite a few of them. So you probably register for it. To dovetail on that, coming out of CAR from about three weeks ago, um, the California Association of Realtors has uh, is sponsoring legislation to make the buyer. Uh, representation agreement mandatory in the state of California. This is good news for all of us. Uh, this levels the playing field uh, of the 21 states where the where this where it is mandatory. There are no lawsuits filed in any of those 21 states. This is the problem, and so the mandatory use of that should settle things down for us in California as well. And to that end. Uh, I believe it's NAR. Samantha, you want to look into this and push it out to everyone. NAR is teaching a buyer representation agreement course with, I believe, a three-hour credit uh, free, right? So it's it's on the house. As a result of all that's going on, you'd normally be paying for this, but see, but NAR has a course that's uh, that, that is free. So we should all be tell you, we're all we're all gonna tell you, like we yeah. we're gonna, we're gonna pop in on that. This is this is something that you could. The conversations out there in the universe, your, your sophisticated sellers or buyers already understand that there's some something new out there that could be to their advantage or they perceive as to their advantage, right? It's, it's the same for us, right? It, we, you know, in California, our contracts have already always stated it. They, you know, they moved it into bold. If, if, if anyone hasn't noticed, they moved the... In you know in the in the MLS you can print out a uh, an agent report or a client report. The client report now has the CSO printed. Oh, wow. Starting last week, I noticed. Yeah, yeah, I knew that was coming. I haven't seen yeah. it and pay attention. Yeah, but yeah, the CSO printed. Yeah, which is great. Who okay. cares? I mean, yes. it, you know, everybody. It's it's just transparency across the board, right? It just forces us to be really clear on the buy side of the transaction, what our value is. And on the listing side, we're pretty clear. Like everybody understands what it is that you do and how you make people money. On the buy side of the transaction, that's a weaker conversation for most of us, me included. And so um, we, we got a lot of, well, we got a lot of, well, there is, but, yeah, but, but we need language around that, right? We need talking points. We need clarification. We need language around it. We need, you know, the, the, you know, there's always been that 171 things you do for people on the listing side. Like we do this, we're like 171 things on our checklist. What's that on the buy side? That does not exist. I've never seen it. So to my knowledge, that is not out there anywhere in the same way that we've always done.
it with listings. So that's how this thing is going to flip. Yeah. Regarding yep. the car um, thing that you were mentioning, mm -hmm. one, when they do that, is it going to then do what I feel New York already has, where they actually do not allow a listing agent to then represent the buyer? That's dual agency. Yeah, they do not allow that. They make you away with there the are only it's either seven or eight states in the United States that allow dual agency. We are one of those. So don't screw it up, everyone. And let's, you know, <laughs> so, but, you know, but it's, so the, the bigger, the more problems there are around it, the more likelihood, you know, that, that, that will is. So if you, if you handle it correctly, and I believe that a lot of us do, then maybe that'll hang out for a while. It may, this may be the beginning of the end of dual agency yeah. for us. Um, you know, and 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 and, and, and yet buyer's agent dramatically. Well, and yet dual yes. agent. The, the definition of dual agency will have to change as yeah. legislated in the state of California, yeah. which is now under the same brokerage. Well, there's no way you're going to say, oh well, I, you know, no other Keller Williams agent in the world can yeah. sell your house. Like that's not going to happen. So there are a lot of legislative things that are going to have to change if that's mm -hmm. going to come to fruition. But the writing may be on the wall. Right, and then to also piggyback on that, if the Buyer is a standalone, like it's you know, and, and you know, maybe things change. Have there been a talk about lenders then allowing for the larger closing costs? Yes. Or wrapping it into the yes, yeah. where, uh, and that where question, has that conversation happened because I, I've talked well, to the lenders, lenders that, who are saying it's never going to happen. Oh. Oh. Gov Hutchison, head legal at CAR, said the moment that it is the moment that it comes down that way, that that's what's going to have to happen. Fannie and Freddie will change it the next day. They could change it tomorrow. They won't until they have to, because without that, they're out of business. There will be no business. There will be no Fannie and Freddie loans. It once once the DOJ says never again, it will change the next day. Yeah, agreed. So, because it'll have to. Yeah, it'll have to. I mean, it's yeah. so many. Yeah. All right, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. We could have this way. Okay. I want to no, talk about family reunion. They were very careful at family reunion to not discuss these mm -hmm. cases. Yeah. Because no they specifics. are they are active litigants in them. So it was I thought there was going to be conversation around it, and there was very, very little. Well, the uh, the settlement yeah. has not been approved yet. Right. Yeah, but that's the thing. So yeah. all right. Um, Give me more, Charlotte. What did you? Uh, what did you? What, what were some of the highlights of your uh, breakout sessions? Um, I tried to do a lot of the social media stuff because I feel it's just something I I should do and I don't sure. do because I feel like I convey value one on one much better than I do in a in a larger fashion. And I one of those people that takes a lot of classes and may not necessarily act on it. Um. And I think the big takeaway from that, which I, I already knew, but and I'm sure you do too, is there's a lot of people in the world. And don't stress being everything to all people when you're putting yourself out there. You will resonate with the people that resonate with you. There was a girl who was a uh, mom, just got her license, was pregnant. So, you know, sorry? Uh, Tally Hunt was yeah, her name, was actually. Um, I do not resonate with her at all, but people do. And people do, right? yeah, a, a lot of people. Do. She's got, you know, a ton of a ton of followers on Facebook. She hand, she does it differently. She handles her Instagram differently from her Facebook. She she is looking for those, you know, God fearing or loving, whatever you want to call it. Uh, must moms that's her base that she's going for of, of little little kids um so like i said it does, may not resonate with me but it resonates with a huge portion of people and yeah. she built this amazing business where she was able to retire her husband and then he helps i think he was in the military or something he helps her with her business she's got a big team and she seems to truly enjoy her work um i think like the AI conversation to ignore that part of our business is probably not effective. The other thing I really learned about it, which I, I knew in the back of my mind, but I see so many agents not doing it this way that I thought, huh, maybe it's, maybe it's okay. Don't use Canva. It, it shows the algorithm that you're selling, that you're being selling. And the algorithm doesn't like that. And those are the posts that don't get engagement. Be authentic. 
If you want to talk about a, a property you just sold, get up there and talk about the property you just sold, not a just sold, just listed, just sold, just listed. It will bury you in the algorithm and it doesn't work. So if you want to do it so that you feel like you're doing something, by all means, do whatever. It's just not going to create engagement. And engage, a small amount of engagement is going to be more valuable to you Focus than a large yeah. amount of bots that are following you. Yeah, yeah. Um, know so, who your client is. Know well, know who you want your, your client. It's sort of like the one thing. Know who you want your client to be and target your um, your information to them and have it be something sure. that's sustainable for you. Well, but and I'm all talk because I haven't done any. You know, but it's, important to, it's, it's important to understand who you resonate with also, right? right? You, know, you can have an aspirational uh, client and it may, it may take 10 years to adapt your, your, your language and your narrative to fit a compelling conversation, uh, uh, to create a compelling conversation for them. But there, there are people who already trust you. There are people who will already uh, do business with you. And you that know? was part of that. Is, I'd love to, to know that. who remembers that slide because this happened at Mega Camp. This happened at Family Reunion. They do the big presentation. They talk about where do people find their realtor? What 85, 90% of people use a realtor in a transaction? It's in the slide set. Where yeah. do they find them? Yeah. Yeah. From referrals, from yeah. Sphere. It's not... Oh, gee, I tripped over this person on social media. If they find you on social media, yeah. it's because they feel they've gotten to know yeah. you and they feel that they do mm -hmm. know you. Yeah. It's not because you once a week posted it just listed or just sold. It's it and it was, I think it was 85% or something. Yeah. That's why I'd say we'll tell you exactly where business comes from. Yeah. And all you have to do is like tailor your and but it was so dramatically ahead yes. Yes. of all the other activities we think we're supposed to be right. doing we it's the internet we think they find you on the internet yeah but From they don't nothing, right? Right. they don't but, but, so yeah, talk yeah. with the point being talk to people talk to people well chuck's out there and he is door knocking in a specific area and then but if you ask those people that chuck's door knocking to how they found Chuck, they're not going to say because he knocked on my door. They're going to say because I've known him for so long. Right. Absolutely. Through that action. But, but the, so, the point is the social media, you, you, you can't separate the two. It's, it, it's about integrating right. both of those conversations. It's Chuck's at my door and oh yeah, I see what Chuck's been doing in social media, right? If it's the first time Chuck's at my door or the fifth time or the 20th time he's at my door, uh, you know, my need, it's not going to change my need for real estate. But when I do have a need to buy or sell real estate, I already have a, a I'm, I'm, I'm predisposed to Chuck, Chuck. To get you in the mix. Right? Remember that yeah. one. Right. Yeah. You're predisposed to Chuck. Yeah. I'm going to get a t-shirt made. Uh, and, and so, you know, social media, it, and, and in that social media, it should be focused on that, you know, if, if he wants to get the most out of his farm, it should be focused on things happening in that farm. All their videos are in that farm. They talk about the they talk about particular idiosyncrasies of houses in that farm sometimes and then they start to talk about large which is also the beauty of AI because if you feed it, it will tell you what those people in that want demographic to want to see. So the guy said Look, older people, baby boomers, which are the massive demographic of people that will be moving over the yeah. next few years, what is the one thing, what is the main thing they're concerned about? Packing. They are concerned about packing. Yes. Packing all the crap that they've accumulated over a lifetime of families in their homes and the kids' artwork from elementary school. Like, what do they do with all that? So what should your social media be addressing? Packing. <laughs> Cleaning out the house. We're doing a seminar at the end of this month on decluttering. As a result of that, like, you know, what, do you, what is it that people are concerned about that you want to focus on and tailor your message to those people? That is the, that is the other power of AI. It's like, you don't have to get out there and do all the research. Ask the question yeah. and let it spit some things out for you and then follow up, see where it goes. Yeah. Like, it's fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. All right, so all right, 15, uh, Richard's going to be here in 15. Right. Oh, 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 just, just like one thing that uh, uh, you're going to do that you took away from family reunion that you're going to do tomorrow, today. We'll start it already. Hit Plus, it, Russ. Uh, the one thing, I'm listening to the one thing. Boom, oh, yeah. great. Chuck. Uh, recommitting to three hours of door knocking a day. Excellent. Mine might be AI. It is. Excellent. <laughs>
Then it's Josephine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Josephine are going to be AI partners. Right? Yeah. Yeah. In the brain. Exactly. I'm going to work on the platform three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm definitely already using that, and I'm wishing I'd been to the AI thing. I think I'm going to do this. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I have the notes from that, and I, I just need to clean them up a little bit because they were quickly on my phone. So I have the notes, and I'm happy to send them to anybody and chat about it because the more and, I talk and, about it, the more I get out yeah, of it. And Samantha and I were just discussing trying to find somebody to teach a class on that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. Maybe how to, how to use those prompts. Um, I think that would help all of us. Yep. Yeah. And then for me, because I also do recruiting for the office and um, our ownership, um, there's a tool they talked about that I'm going to be working on Heat Seeker. Heat Seeker. Yeah, and, and Heat Seeker is going to be released to all the agents. Uh, there's an agent version of Heat Seeker coming out, Correct. which basically goes Not into your, your uh, basically goes into your database, and it um, it uses analytics to determine who might likely buy yourself in the near future. Nice. So the only other thing I'm saying is the interesting conversation and Gary never does this, but he did it this time. Uh, the guy from homes.com on stage. Oh, that was interesting. That's an interesting yeah. conversation. Yeah, that was a whole other. And, and homes.com is poised to eat everybody else's lunch. So if uh, homes.com bought Homesnap, if any of you used to be on Homesnap, homes.com bought them. They had their first Super Bowl ad this year. They are spending a bajillion dollars, a bajillion dollars to get in front of everybody. They're like, we will surpass uh, realtor.com, we'll surpass Zillow. So we'll we'll surpass everyone. Objective is to keep the agent in the center of the transaction. Those are the people yeah, we should be giving our money second. to, not Zillow, who is set to do you in and will remove you from the transaction. So the number two objective is to. I don't remember number two. Get rid of Zillow. Get rid of Zillow. Yeah. I love Zillow number two. Zillow. Zillow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I did invest. Pay a little in attention to Homes.com. It sounded like their their dollar amounts were quite a bit lower. Too, than, than Zillow. Uh, yeah, I don't know where all that money is coming from, but they're spending a fortune. But I like the conversation and that it is agent centric. Anything that is agent centric is fine by me. So, and that's a question we should all be asking as we spend our money. Where do. Co-star. Co-star. CoStar is the new national MLS. Wait, just wait and see. CoStar will be the national MLS. So a little, a little CoStar is a commercial, uh, a commercial data company. They are dot loop also, which is where they, information they goes on the backside they to go into KW. Loopnet. loopnet. I'm sorry, Loopnet, not dot loop. Loopnet. So before, before computers were so prevalent in our business, um, the owner of CoStar, who was on the stage, right? He graduated Princeton, Princeton, and created this uh, created this company. Handling. It's a commercial database company. This is when there, when computers were not being used very rapidly. You close a commercial deal, somebody from CoStar is calling you saying, "Hey, what are the? You're, they're asking you a whole survey. They're taking all that information. They're putting it in the and and they built this database over time. And they they they." Voraciously defend the information and the information sharing. And they have good, I have to say, because I, I was using HomeSnap, uh, HomeSnap for all yeah. the a lot of hours, like everything that was here. And now, as of literally a couple weeks ago, you know, like they fully transitioned yeah. yeah. And I was looking at a listing for the dentist there. And there is a whole new set of additionally it's super helpful. Oh, they love that. With the they listing agent's that. name always on the listing. Yeah. Yep. It is that. your listing, it's your they business. Yeah. All right, all right. We gotta run. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. All right. Uh here's bagels in the back. Richard's gonna start at 12 in about 10 minutes, right? Is he here? What, 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 what,